Hi, I'm Pontifex Maximus, here to bring you a ruler review of 1066. Now 1066 is a fairly important year, aside from being the birth year of Henry, Count of Portugal, it's also the year where one of the more famous succession wars took place. Now I'll be talking about three rulers here. Firstly, Harold, King of England, William, Duke of Normandy, and Harold Hadrada, King of Norway. We begin with the Saxon Kingdom of England. Your situation when beginning isn't that great. We've got the uh, Northmen up there, and then the Normans are coming down here, but at least you can take these guys out before the other ones come. Although, as we know from history, that didn't go so well. Now, if we look at the ruler himself, you can see his learning isn't that bad. But his other traits are not that great. Arbitrary, proud, envious, content. I mean, he's not really a great guy. This is the man that, on his trusted king's deathbed, declared that the old man had decided that he should be king and that just took his crown. You know, completely just forgetting about all laws and just fuck it, I'll be king. Oh, and look look what happened now. Now the Northmen and the Normans are coming and what, this is what happens when you don't go by the books. Filthy peasant. So if you do want to play the Saxons, I'd say you've bought into Harold's propaganda. I mean, his father was unlanded. His grandfather was unlanded. He is merely a commoner that's usurped a god-given throne. But maybe that's maybe you get a kick out of that. Now, if we look at the Normans, we can see there's quite a different situation going on here. In England, the Northmen have landed, and the Saxons are going to be meeting them up by York, which means you have free reign to land wherever you want and wait for them to fight it out and slaughter the survivors. Once you've won the war, you will have Normandy as part of your realm, though the downside to that is that France will want it back and will hold you down and beat your face until they have it. So there will be quite a few wars with France after you've conquered uh, Albion. Right, now let's check out William's stats. Straight away we can see it's a completely different story. It's got the highest tier there, Brilliant Strategist. Uh, he is a bastard though, but he's ambitious, diligent, proud, cynical, brave, temperate, and patient. So really well rounded there as a character. Really the thing to remember here is who were the Normans? Who were William's grandfathers? Now the Normans were actually Vikings that made a pact with the King of France that they would stop raiding in exchange for land. I mean we could just trace it back here. Okay, father, grandfather. Going back here. Yeah, here we go. Hrolvur or Hrolf. Norse, Norse there. And in one generation, they've gone to Norman and Catholic. So you have to ask yourself, do you want to play a character whose grandfathers forsake their roots so quickly? I mean, at that point, you're basically just playing an easier version of Harold. And finally, we have the Kingdom of Norway. Now, unlike the other king in this war, you're actually fighting to get another kingdom. Which means, if you're victorious, you'll end up with two kingdoms instead of one. <laughs> Obviously, this will result in some horrific borders, but you can have a few years to gain more land in Scandinavia and then give off your English kingdom, thus retaining pretty and sensible borders. So if we come down here we can see the uh, situation in the war isn't exactly great. You are outnumbered, but the thing to remember here is that statistics are for Saxons and Normans. Your army is made out of true men of the north, each one taking down at least five puny Saxons. Then. When the Normans land on the southern shores with their war horses, 
you will show them the true superiority of the Scandinavian pony, thus culminating in a victory that will rekindle the Norse flames of war. Okay, well this is a ruler review, so let's check out Harold here. Okay, so he doesn't have the highest tier of learning there, but he does have Varangian. I mean, those guys were hardcore. Uh, just, great trait. Zealous, uh, envious, everyone has their flaws. And brave. So, a real, a true hero there, I'd say. And he is Norwegian. Which, it's unofficial, but actually, the Scandinavian cultures have a higher chance of getting the good genetic traits, as such as attractive, strong, I mean everybody knows this. And let's not forget that Harold is part of House Ingling, which means that he is descendant of Harald Herfer, the king that united Norway, and therefore he is from a respectable family. And thus, Harold has the best results, the best genes, and the best house. We don't talk about the Russian wife. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked this informative review brought to you by the Social Scandinavian Heritage Fund, or the SSHF.